You hear all about the reactions of people who have been found guilty of heinous crimes, but what about those found innocent? Sometimes their responses are far more incredible. From a man collapsing to his knees to one crying tears of joy to finally be free after wrongful imprisonment, here are 20 reactions of innocent prisoners set free. Number 20. Kwame Ajamu on a beautiful spring day in 1975, Kwaje Ajamu, formerly known as Ronnie Bridgman, his brother Wiley Bridgman, and their friend Ricky Johnson were accused of murdering businessman Harry Franks outside a corner store. After almost 40 years of being known as a convicted murderer behind prison walls, Kwame was set free. And this is how convicts reacted after hearing their innocence. The smartly dressed Kwame cried happy tears as he was acquitted of the crime. The three men had been convicted and sentenced to death, with evidence coming from a 12-year-old witness, Eddie Vernon. Eddie was 13 when he testified against Kwame, Riley, and Ricky, and Kwame was just 17. However, the injustice was finally brought to light in 2003 when Eddie admitted in an affidavit that the Cleveland police had coerced him. All three were absolved of their crimes. Cleveland civil rights and defense attorney Terry Gilbert said the recognition of the injustice gave him hope in the criminal justice system. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Michael Hanlein. Michael Hanline looked utterly overwhelmed when he walked out of a courtroom a free man. He looked up to the sky, and even as he was driven away by his legal team and supporters, he was in utter shock about what had just happened. Michael was finally a free man after spending 36 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit, one that had seen him receive the title of the longest wrongful incarceration in California's history. One of the first things he did was order a burger like he had seen in TV ads, and he got to sit down and enjoy it with fries and a drink. It's the simple things that Michael had missed out on for almost four decades. That's what meat tastes like, huh? <laughs> Michael's story began in 1978 when a biker named T.J. McGarry went missing from his home in Ventura County, and his body was found a few days later. He had been shot multiple times and dumped about 30 miles from his home. Michael was arrested for the crime, but he always maintained his innocence, and it seems that people involved in the California Innocence Project believed him. They uncovered sealed police reports that pointed to a known drug dealer, Bruce Robertson, who had steered the investigation towards Michael. Michael rather than himself. After an evidentiary hearing in 2010, a judge recommended that Michael's case be overturned. Finally, on November 24, 2014, Michael was set free. Number 18. Devante Sanford Devante Sanford was all smiles for the camera when he was released from prison after spending around eight years locked up for a quadruple murder he didn't commit. Devante was just 14 years old when he was accused of the crime, and it made no sense to those who knew him. However, according to Devante, the hard part is over. He plans to focus on enjoying everyday things like learning how to drive, and eventually would like to become a motivational speaker for at-risk youth. Devante's life was turned upside down in 2007 when four people were shot and killed in a Runyon drug house on Detroit's east side. Devante heard all the commotion and ventured outside to see what was happening. At that moment, a Detroit Detroit police homicide detective approached him and asked him about the murders. Somehow, Devante ended up confessing to murders he didn't commit and was put in prison the following year. However, just two weeks after he went to prison, a hitman called Vincent Smothers confessed to 12 murders, including four that Devante had been charged with. Prosecutors only charged him with eight. Innocence advocates fought for years to get Devante's case overturned, and finally he was able to walk out of the Bellamy Creek Correctional Facility a free man. Number 17. Stephen Avery 
If you've seen the TV show Making a Murderer, you might be familiar with Stephen Avery. He's a convicted murderer from Manitowoc County in Wisconsin who's been serving a life sentence after a jury convicted him of killing a photographer who went missing. However, we need to backtrack a little because that murder conviction and subsequent imprisonment wasn't Stephen's first rodeo. In 2003, he was released from prison after spending nearly two decades behind bars for the first degree sexual assault and attempted murder of a jogger. He received a sentence of 32 years in 1985, but served just 18 years before DNA evidence proved he was innocent and the crimes were linked to someone else who was already serving a 60-year sentence for sexual assault and kidnapping. When he was released, one of the first things he wanted to do was eat a lunch of ribs with his family before they headed back to their Two Rivers home. Stephen said he felt terrific and was savoring the feeling of the wind with no bars and no fences. Although Stephen said he also felt bitterness and believed the system needed to be fixed. Before he was sent to prison, he was married with five children, and the events that played out caused him to lose his wife, kids, and family. Number 16. Danielle Lorenzo Villegas it's hard not to get a little bit emotional when you see how Daniel Villegas reacted after hearing about his innocence. Even before the verdict is read, he's a nervous, crying wreck in the courtroom, unable to even look at anyone as he awaits to hear the news that could change his life forever. When the not guilty verdict is read out, the courtroom erupts and Daniel pretty much collapses in relief. We, the jury, find the defendant Daniel Villegas not guilty of... He is emotional, and everyone around him is equally so. It's like years of hope and hard work have finally paid off, and Danielle can leave prison a free man. Danielle spent a quarter of a century behind bars after being wrongfully convicted of murder when he was just 16 years old. He had falsely confessed after being made to undergo hours and hours of brutal police interrogation. Allegedly, at the tender age of 16, Danielle had opened fire on four teenagers walking home from a party in El Paso, Texas in 1993. Two were shot dead. Police never found any DNA or forensic evidence, but somehow pointed at Danielle for the crime. Similar interrogation techniques techniques were used on his family to implicate Daniel, and he was then subjected to a five-hour interrogation in the middle of the night with threats of beating, sexual assault, and the death penalty. Finally, in 2008, he was given his day in court and was exonerated. Number 15. Ricky Jackson Finally. Finally, that's all Ricky Jackson could say after he was released from prison a free man after spending 39 years wrongfully imprisoned for a murder he did not commit. Ricky was the friend of brothers Riley and Ronnie Bridgman, and all three were charged with the murder of a businessman outside a corner store. The star witness was a 12-year-old paperboy who knew all three teenagers and said Ricky fired the handgun. He was a shaky witness and didn't identify Ricky or the others in a lineup, and his classmates even testified that he wasn't near the crime scene. However, three juries accepted his account anyway, and Ricky and his two friends were convicted in 1975 and sentenced to die by electric chair. When the truth finally came out, Ricky had spent nearly four decades behind bars. He was given almost a million dollars by the state and bought a house for himself and his fiance. When he was interviewed later, Ricky said he feels a sense of urgency these days because he knows how much time prison took away from him. He said he intends to live well, but it has nothing to do with whether he's in a lovely house or homeless. Instead, he said it's about his attitude, and he's not going to waste his time by holding grudges. Number 14. Luis Vargas California man Luis Vargas was sentenced to 55 years to life in prison for the rape of one woman and the attempted rape of two others in 1998. He maintained his innocence, and the hard work of the California Innocence Project saw him finally free in 2015 after serving 16 years behind bars. Luis looked relieved, emotional, and thankful when he finally heard the words he had been waiting to hear for 16 long years. Not guilty. The crimes were actually committed by someone described as 
the teardrop rapist, who is believed to have committed up to 25 crimes in the LA area. When Luis was convicted, DNA evidence wasn't advanced as it is now, and eyewitness testimony was one of the most robust forms of evidence the case had. According to the California Innocence Project attorney Alex Simpson, eyewitness testimony is also the number one factor in wrongful convictions throughout the United States. Eating a hamburger was one of the first things Luis did when he was released from prison. Buy me a big hamburger and we eat it together. <laughs> he told his mother, Mom, when I'm outside, please buy me a big hamburger and we'll eat it together. Number 13. Raymond Towler Raymond Towler was all smiles as he left the courtroom to begin his first day a free man. The Cleveland, Ohio man spent 29 years or over half his life behind bars for rape, a rape that he was wrongfully convicted of. As he left the court, he hugged friends and family and shook hands with as many people as possible. He could now start the next chapter of his life. Raymond was convicted in 1981 based on eyewitness testimony. There was no physical evidence to suggest he was guilty of the crime he was accused of. He pled not guilty and denied ever committing the crime, even though admitting guilt might have seen him Paroled, he never once saw that as an option. Only a tiny amount of physical evidence existed for testing, and DNA testing wasn't advanced in the 1980s. Even when DNA was tested in the 1990s, there still wasn't enough evidence to prove he was innocent. However, an inconclusive DNA test came back in 2008, which suggested his innocence, and the ball got rolling for his case to be heard. The lab identified the rapist's DNA on the victim's underwear, and it didn't belong to Raymond. The Cuyahoga County prosecutor agreed to Raymond's release, and he was exonerated and freed in 2010 after almost three long decades. Number 12. Horace Roberts Horace Roberts spent 20 years behind bars for a crime he didn't commit and was given many opportunities to admit his guilt, apologize, and be released from prison. However, Horace said he wouldn't allow the system to rob him of any more than they had. I refuse to allow the system to rob me of what I had left. You took my pride, you took my dignity, you stole my self-worth. I was not going to give you my soul. And so he remained in prison for 20 long years, waiting until the day when he would be found innocent. That day finally arrived in 2018, when DNA evidence proved that he was, in fact, innocent. Horace's story began in 1999, when a prosecutor said, what is more compelling than Horace Roberts's watch that was found next to the murdered woman's body? There's nothing more compelling than that. Terry Cheek was found strangled on the shores of Corona Lake in 1998, and her two daughters and husband were the last people to see her alive. However, Horace was having an affair with her, which Horace lied to people about out of shame and embarrassment. Police saw his lies as cover for committing the murder. However, DNA testing proved the watch didn't actually belong to Horace. Instead, it belonged to someone related to Terry who had more than enough motive to kill her or have her killed. Number 11. Brian Banks with tears in his eyes, Brian Banks said, My only dream in the world was to just be free and to have the same opportunity as everybody here. Dream in the world was to just be free and to have the same opportunity as everybody here. He said those words after finally being released from prison after spending five years there for a rape that didn't happen. Brian was wrongfully convicted of rape at 17 years old in 2002 when he was a promising football star who might have been destined for the NFL. His future looked bright up until a high school acquaintance, Juanetta Gibson, accused him of rape and kidnapping after a consensual sexual encounter. Brian was in an impossible situation. He could either fight the charges and spend 41 years to life in prison or or take a plea deal and remain in jail for just over five years. This option would see his college and football dreams likely over. However, Wynette recanted her statement after almost a decade and said she fabricated the story. The California Innocence Project presented the evidence and an investigation was launched. Finally, in 2012, Brian's conviction was reversed and he was a free man. After his release, he said there comes a time when you have to let go and move on, but the only thing he wasn't letting go of was this fight. And the new just kept getting better for Brian. The California Innocence Project director Justin Brooks spoke to the press and asked NFL teams to give Brian Banks a chance at football, after he received phone calls from six NFL teams. Number 10. Susan Mellon 
59-year-old Susan Mellon, a mother and grandmother, broke down in tears of relief when she was acquitted of murder. She had served 17 years for the crime. In 1997, Susan lived with her boyfriend Tom and two of her young children, Jessica and Donnie. Susan was known as a doting and gentle mother even though she used methamphetamine throughout her 30s and intermittently for the next decade. The year before, she had separated from her children's father and she began briefly dating Rick Daly before he went to jail and their relationship ended. She met Tom that same year and they moved in with him. However, they were being evicted from the apartment and arranged to move into a new place. On the evening of July 21st, Susan was with her daughter Jessica and Tom's father Jim, organizing their possessions for moving day. However, little did Susan know that gang members were savagely attacking and killing Rick Daly just miles away. LA police received tips that gang members were to blame and that the attack had happened in a property that Susan had lived in five months earlier. A woman named June Patty claimed that she had spoken to Susan and that she had admitted to taking part in the murder. On August 25, 1997, Susan was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Finally, in 2014, she was proven factually innocent and was awarded over half a million dollars in compensation. Number 9. James Richardson James Richardson said prison cost him a lot of things, such as his health, marriage, and freedom. He also said it took him a long time to get used to life as a free man, and you can understand that since he spent 21 years in prison for the murder of his seven children. He maintained his innocence, and finally everyone knew that he really was innocent. The 32-year-old fruit picker was wrongfully convicted of poisoning his children in Arcadia in 1968, and he was finally freed in 1989. James and his wife worked full-time, and a neighbor used to watch their children while they worked. When news of their seven children dying became known, the pressure was put on the sheriff and prosecutor to hold someone to account. After finding a bottle of powerful insecticide in James's shed, which was the same one used to poison the kids, he was arrested. A report also said that he had spoken to his insurance agent about life insurance policies for his family, and two jailhouse informants said James had confessed. James was convicted and sentenced to death, but his sentence was commuted to 25 years to life. However, new information came to light that would change everything. The children's babysitter had told nursing home workers that she had poisoned the children, and it was also revealed that the only living jailhouse informant implicated James after a deputy coerced him. Evidence had also been suppressed at trial, which revealed he never purchased life insurance policies as he didn't have the money. The babysitter was never indicted as she died in 1992 and suffered from Alzheimer's. Number 8. Archie Williams Archie Williams spent 36 years in a Louisiana prison for stabbing and raping a woman in her home in 1982. That would have been justice for any victim to see someone go away for that length of time. But Archie was innocent. He never committed those crimes, but he said that being a poor black kid meant he didn't have the financial ability to fight the state of Louisiana. So he was found guilty and sent to prison for somebody else's crime. About 12 years into his sentence, he reached out to the Innocence Project, who took on his case and worked hard for 24 long years to clear his name. They managed to access fingerprints from the crime scene, and within eight hours of searching the FBI's database with those fingerprints, they linked them to a serial assailant, not Archie. A week later, Archie was a free man and was trying to rebuild the life that had been taken from him. Since then, he has taken part in musical events and even appeared on America's Got Talent after watching it in prison and dreaming of taking the stage. His story was so impactful that Simon Cowell was inspired to become an innocence ambassador to help other people wrongfully convicted get the chance they deserve. Number 7. Andre Hatchet Andre Hatchett was keen to see his family and eat some real food after having his murder conviction overturned in 2016, and in his own words, he said, I told y'all I didn't do this. And he didn't. But that was only realized after the 49-year-old man with intellectual challenges had spent 25 years in prison. He was sent to jail in 1991 after a woman was found naked and dead in a park. Andre said he was happy to be free again and that he had lost his son, his mom, and his dad while in prison. 
According to his lawyers, the case was tainted with prosecutorial mistakes, a dubious star witness, and the denial of crucial information at two trials. Andre was accused of the crime because the murder victim was his friend, and he had left her apartment with her that night. The star witness had originally named someone else, but prosecutors never told Andre's lawyers that he had initially pointed to someone else in a lineup. Andre had cooperated with the police and gave an alibi, but he wasn't off the hook. And even though Andre was on crutches and was wearing a cast on his right leg when the murder happened, he was still charged with the crime. On February 19, 1992, Andre was convicted of second-degree murder and was sentenced to 25 years to life. Finally, on March 10, 2016, Assistant District Attorney Mark Hale said Andre's prosecution was a systemic failure and he should have never been charged with this homicide. Number 6. Kyle Rittenhouse Kyle Rittenhouse was shaking uncontrollably and finally collapsed in sobs when his not guilty verdict was read out in a courtroom in 2021. Unlike many other cases, though, Kyle did shoot and kill two people and injured another during the August 2020 protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin. It took a jury 27 hours to deliberate over four days before he was found not guilty of the five charges that he had faced. According to Kyle's defense attorney, there were times they had doubt and times they were confident. Legal experts said the acquittal wasn't surprising. They believed that anyone who saw the evidence might have difficulty coming to a unanimous decision that Kyle wasn't acting in self-defense. There were people right there. Prosecutors said Kyle put himself in danger and made reckless choices. He visited Kenosha during riots, armed himself with an AR-15 style rifle, and stayed in the area past curfew. The first person Kyle shot had chased him through a parking lot and reached for his gun. Kyle shot him four times, killing him. More people started chasing Kyle, including one who was armed with a pistol and another who struck him with a skateboard. Two men believed Kyle was an active shooter and were trying to disarm him, while Kyle testified that he feared for his life. Number 5. David Robinson Life can be a little bit harder for those who have criminal records. The police might think you're involved in crimes you haven't committed simply because you've committed crimes in the past, and that might have contributed to David Robinson being locked up in prison for 17 years for a murder he didn't commit. Bar owner Sheila Box was killed as she left her bar in 2000. During the murder, David was at a family gathering, which three relatives verified. No physical evidence linked David to the crime, and two witnesses who placed David at the scene later recanted their testimony. Another man even confessed to the crimes in 2004, but he wouldn't sign an affidavit to make the confession official and later committed suicide in his cell. David said that the Sykeston police knew he was innocent but played a part in stopping his conviction from being overturned in two appeals. He said the police framed him because they didn't like him and possibly because he had a criminal record starting from 15 years old. After 17 years behind bars, the state Supreme Court overturned his conviction and he was released in 2017. David filed a lawsuit and he successfully sued for $8 million. Number 4. Daniel Jones Daniel Jones and Sarah Jane Parkinson were in what appeared to be a happy relationship. They were planning their future, including building a house. However, that was before Sarah accused Daniel of domestic abuse and rape. Sarah, who worked as a police station clerical assistant, filed a complaint with the police on the same day she started an affair with a co-worker. Even though Daniel had a solid alibi for when these events supposedly happened, that didn't stop him and his family from facing 32 separate charges and spending upwards of $350,000 on legal fees. Daniel even had to spend about five months in a maximum security prison while awaiting his trial. Daniel and his family's world was turned upside down and it took five years for the truth to be realized, and that truth was that Sarah was a serial liar. She had lied to everyone and was found guilty in 2019 and sent to prison for three years and one month. The case oozed injustice, and a petition set up to help the Jones family get restitution even stated that a forensic review revealed there was no evidence to support the 32 charges and subsequent prosecution. Number 3. John Bunn when John Bunn was finally released from prison after his murder conviction was overturned, he looked at the judge and said, I'm an innocent man, your honor, and I have always been an innocent man, your honor. 
It's just a pity it took 27 years for him to get that opportunity. Y'all convicted and had a wrong man in prison. When John was just 14 years old, two corrections officers from Rikers Island were shot during a robbery as they were sitting in their car outside the Kingsboro Housing Project in Brooklyn. Rolando Neischer died from the bullet wound, but Robert Croissant was only shot in the hand. He described the people who shot at them as light-skinned black men in their 20s on bicycles. New York police detective Louis Garcella received a tip naming 17-year-old Roseanne Hargrave as one of the gunmen, followed by another tip that led him to 14-year-old John. Both boys in no way matched the description given by Robert Croissant, nor did the fingerprints found on the vehicle belong to them. However, they were charged with felony murder and felony assault. They were convicted of second-degree murder and assault in 1992. John was sentenced to seven years to life, while Roseanne was sentenced to 30 years to life. A new trial was ordered in 2016, and the judge said the evidence was unreliable. She also mentioned the corrupt practices of the detectives. Number 2. Andrew Wilson Andrew Wilson's 97-year-old mother has been fighting for her son Andrew Wilson's freedom since the day he was arrested in 1984 for the stabbing and murder of 21-year-old Christopher Hansen. Andrew spent 32 long years in prison for a crime he didn't commit, and he was finally able to see his mother after having his convictions vacated. All my students that go to my sisters back there. I got a lot of sisters and brothers. In late October 1984, Christopher and his 17-year-old girlfriend Saladina Bishop were sleeping in their truck in Los Angeles, California, when Saladina said a man leaned through the window and told them to give him their money or they'll die. Another man then took Christopher's wallet and stabbed him ten times. Christopher had a condition that prevented his blood from clotting, and he died at the scene. The next day, Saladino looked through about 1,500 mugshot photos and identified two men. Neither was Andrew. However, later, Andrew's photo was included in a collection of pictures, and Saladina identified Andrew as the man who stabbed Chris. After the jury deliberated for three days, he was convicted of first-degree murder and robbery and sentenced to life without parole. Andrew contacted the Loyola Law School Project for the Innocent, and a reinvestigation got underway. After his release in 2017, lawyers for Andrew filed a federal civil rights lawsuit, and he received over $1.6 million in state compensation in 2021. I'm just glad it's right now. That's he also settled a federal lawsuit for $14 million. Number 1. Vincent Simmons Vincent Simmons said he felt good and he wanted to go away somewhere quiet to think and enjoy his freedom after being released from a Louisiana prison where he spent 45 years for a crime he said he didn't commit. In 1977, it took a jury of 11 white men and one black woman just minutes to convict Vincent for the attempted sexual assault of 14-year-old twin sisters. He was just 25 years old and was sentenced to the maximum term, 50 years for each twin to be served consecutively. That would have been justice for the victims, but they likely had the wrong man. You know, you see, wait for those two white girls. I said, I don't even really know these white girls. Vincent didn't get a fair trial, and the jury never heard game changing information that might have changed the outcome. At the time, the girls told the police that they didn't know who the man was, that he was black, and that all black people look alike. According to reports, they even used the N word. The twins, 59 years old when Vincent was freed, were at the courthouse for the first time since the original trial. They insist they are the victims and that Vincent is guilty. There are plenty of guilty people out there who have been caught red-handed, but there are also so many cases where people have been sent to jail for many years and were innocent from the beginning. Which of these stories shocked you the most? Can you think of any high-profile cases like these where you live? I just watched The Innocent Man yesterday on Netflix. It's a mini-series based on a John Grisham book. Fantastic viewing, very sad story. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.